Hello friends, in this video tutorial we will be talking about the typical genetic arrangement of line and shine which are the most common type of um, uh, transposable element in eukaryotic cell in higher eukaryotic organisms like us and uh, plants and all this. Okay, Now <coughs> in this case what you can see a very uh, similarity or important similarity between these two uh, type of transposable element line and shine. Now the full form of line is long interspersed nuclear element and sign means short in interspersed nuclear elements. Now as the name suggests lines are a uh, little bit uh, longer than shines but lines are uh, having uh, uh, but, but there is a basic level of construction of their genetic al arrangement and that is in, in uh, their transposable element so the first thing about uh, the similarity between both of them are their transposable element that means they have the ability to move uh, from uh, their genetic position to another position but uh, the mechanism of their movement are not uh, like the conventional movement of DNA cut and paste so what they are doing in this case they are not cutting their uh, genetic segment from a place and put it somewhere else they are making a copy of their uh, DNA which is uh, mRNA uh, via transcription then this mRNA is finally trans trans uh, again reverse transcribed into a DNA which is called the cDNA or complementary DNA now this DNA carries all the necessary ingredients that uh, that is present in in this uh, host uh, DNA uh, position portion and this this DNA can produce the enzymes for the transposition and this DNA can go on and attach itself onto the target DNA site. Now for this purpose this type of transposition requires the several rounds of the process. First round is the transcription event, second round is the translation event. Remember translation is also important because except for the translation uh, the mRNA uh, cannot code for the important proteins because they need those proteins and without those proteins transposition cannot be possible. So that's why the first round is transcription and the for the transcription we must have the presence of a promoter sequence somewhere in this DNA. So there lies a promoter sequence somewhere in the DNA in this 5 prime uh, region or the C primary region whatever you can have uh, must have a promoter sequence so promoter sequence is there in both the cases okay and uh, usually it is at, at this 5 prime terminal okay so this is a promoter sequence present and it will produce the mRNA and that mRNA will also have all those necessary parts and at the end of uh, their uh, genetic element that means the middle gene portion so which is coding for any protein at both the ends at the 5 prime end and at the 3 prime end it is uh, filled with UTR or untranslated region so this region uh, becomes un uh, remains untranslated but they are transcribed into mRNA so in mRNA we can also find the UTR region but this region during translation these regions are avoiding the translation process that's why they are called the untranslated region Okay, now uh, this is another important in both the cases we are having this. Now the most another important part is that at the three prime UTR, uh, right beside the three prime UTR, it is having a poly A segment, a poly A chain, a small stretch of I mean uh, five to eleven nucleotide base uh, sequence of uh, adenine in this case. Okay, now this adenine base sequence is important because uh, because of uh, or, or it is important for the for the incorporation of the DNA onto the target site because of the target site of the DNA. Suppose this is the target DNA. There is a particular region right after the cleavage of this target site. There is a region one single strand nick and there will be a production of poly T. Now the poly T region at the target site will pair with this poly A uh, of this line and shine so suppose this is the poly A of line and shine this is the poly A it will pair with poly T and the mRNA is paired with this uh, DNA segment okay and then uh, it will utilize the reverse transcriptase enzyme which is coded uh, by this gene and it will start producing the DNA segment so this black color is the DNA and then this red strand is chewed up and it is re it's substituted by a DNA strand. That's how the DNA copy is being made uh, during the transposition uh, of this line and sign elements. You, if you don't know this, go back. There is a video in my channel. You can find the transposition event of line and signs too. Okay, but there is a difference between the line and sign only in the middle region or what we called uh, 
this coding region now this coding region consists of several uh, genes which code for some proteins which are necessary for the transposition now in a line or long interspersed nuclear element there are two different reading frames one is ORF1 open reading frame 1 another one is the open reading frame 2 the open reading frame 1 produces a protein the function of which is unknown but open reading frame 2 produces uh, a protein which is having multiple role a uh, role of having a reverse transcriptase as well as it is having the role for RNAs H that means the endonucleus activity. So the open reading frame 2 code for the protein which is having both reverse transcriptase and RNAs H, RNAs H activity which is actually acting as endonucleus to cleave the strand at the target site and then it is also helping them to produce the DNA or complementary DNA sequence uh, from one mRNA sequence. Okay, so, so the presence of poly A is important and there are open reading frames at the m at the middle and uh, these genes are flanked with UTR sequences in both the directions these are the very very important part about uh, this line and shine elements and another important part is that they don't follow the cut and paste job they follow uh, the process of reverse transcript reverse transcription and then that's why they are called the retrotransposition okay that's it and i hope it will help you thank you